and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is finally here. We have Clark Gregg reprising his role as Agent Phil Coulson of S.H.I.E.L.D. from Marvel Phase 1 in the television show about the non-superpowered good guys in the high-tech sci-fi-ish Marvel Universe. And it was worth the wait. So, basically we have Phil Coulson heading up a team that exactly what they're supposed to be doing is never actually stated outright. They're sort of there to stand as a buffer between the superpowered individuals and the everyday people trying just to get by in the Marvel Universe. But exactly how they mean to do that is sort of left out in the open. In the pilot episode, they seem to be trying to collect superheroes or superpowered beings and set them on the right path or at least get them off the wrong path, but they never really state that as their mission statement. Um, next we have uh, Ming-Na Wen as Agent uh, Melinda May, who is a former field operative who has voluntarily taken herself out of the field for undisclosed reasons that are meant to play out over the course of the entire series, so don't expect any answers anytime soon at all. Um, she's pretty good. I liked her. Um, I also did like uh, Coulson. Coulson is always awesome. You get much more of him than you get in any of the Marvel movies. This is really his show, and it's pretty cool, and he is an actor who can carry a television show. Uh, now we get Brett Dalton playing Agent uh, Grant Ward. Now, Grant Ward is supposed to be your rough, tough uh, super spy, but less, say, less uh, uh, middle era James Bond and more Daniel Craig. He's the, the tough super spy, um, the, the rough manly man guy. And I'm not sure they picked the right actor for this. He's not a bad actor, but um, think of his character as a younger version of Agent Gibbs from NCIS. Now imagine him being played by the guy that plays Tony on NCIS. And you kind of see it's not really a match between actor and character. Um, he's not bad, but he's not really going to stand out. Um, then we get the two science people. We have, uh, what's her name? Her name is Wu. In... The Castiker is actually the guy, plays Leo Fitz, and Elizabeth Henstridge plays Gemma Simmons. They're the two tech people. They bring the sci-fi into this show. Um, they are both British. I think they're supposed to be Scottish. Um, they're good and they're funny, but even for someone who is a dedicated watcher of Doctor Who, I had a lot of trouble finding their accents. There are entire scenes where I have no idea what they said. That's a bit of a problem. Um, that's actually a pretty serious problem. Every time I watch this show, every scene they're in, I'm going to have to put the subtitles on because I cannot understand a word they're saying, not one word. Um, they seem to be funny. Um, in fact, they remind me of the uh, the twins in Bioshock Infinite. They're very much like the twins in Bioshock Infinite, just with much, much, much thicker accents. Um, I like the characters. I want to like the actors, but they've got to do something about those accents. It's critical. Um, and then you have uh, Chloe Bennett playing... A computer hacker named Sky, who is apparently a new recruit uh, brought in off the street, who initially doesn't trust Shield. She's good. Um, she actually is a little predictable in her character. Um, I didn't dislike her, and I didn't dislike the actress playing her, but um, what she can be remains to be seen. Um, now. 
for the upside. The upside is so far this show is 100% Joss Whedon. It's got the humor, it's got the pace, it's very fast paced, it gets you right into the show very quickly. I was not disappointed. I had a lot of fun watching the pilot episode. A lot of fun. The downside. I mentioned the ac the accents of the two British characters. The other downside is simply the downside of the pilot. It won't be a downside for the entire series, just the pilot. In terms of pilots, if you think of a pilot as lining up for a race and firing the starting gun and seeing the beginning of the race happen, this show, this pilot, doesn't really fire the starting gun. The starting gun is going to fire in episode two. You just see the players in this race line up. In fact, the whoever the villains are going to be, at least for season one, you don't even see them get to the starting gate yet. Or they're there and you can't see them. Um, you don't really get a sense of the overall shape of the series from the pilot. It's more the tone of the series and not its direction. Um, I would have liked to see the pilot carry the show a little further into its plot. Um, that said, it was as much fun as I expected it to be. Um, the actual watching of it in the moment was as enjoyable as I hoped it would be. I am not disappointed at all in this. It's just something that I honestly would have preferred to binge watch a bunch of episodes at once instead of going episode by episode by episode because they really, really, really left me wanting more and I want my more right now. Um, so I am going to give this one also four stars, um, mainly because of how much it left me wanting more and they got to do something about the accents of the Brits. Um, this is very easily something where the entire show will probably wind up a five-star show for me. I very much predict that. But as a pilot, this one is going to be four stars. But I will be eagerly awaiting the rest of the series.